wanna buy a world controlling investment firm, writes Wired in 2010 calling all conspiracy minded people to inform them that the Carlyle group which may or may not control the world, their words not mine, is thinking about going public. The Carlyle group was formed in 1987 by David Rubenstein, an American financier and philanthropist who was a domestic policy advisor to President Jimmy Carter before co-founding the company. Rubenstein was known for his talent for ensuring his memos were on top of the pile in President Jimmy Carter's inbox, states another article. Before he became a billionaire, he was a Washington insider working for Jimmy Carter, who is probably one of the last presidents that was truly briefed about the UFO phenomenon and allegedly cried. As the firm grew, it hired senior statement as partners or advisors, including former Defense Secretary Frank Carlucci, former Secretary of State James Baker and former President George Bush. Even CNN wrote an article in 2002 describing their power and connections. From this article, we can see that former British Prime Minister John Major and former Philippines President Fidel Ramos were on their payroll too. The firm also has about a dozen investors from Saudi Arabia, including until recently the Bin Laden family. In 2003, Washington Post writes an article called Connections and then Some, describing pictures of David Rubenstein on a plane with then-governor George Bush, across the room a photo of Rubenstein with the president's father and mother, next to that Rubenstein and the former Soviet Union president Mikhail Gorbachev, Elsewhere Rubenstein and Jimmy Carter, on a bookshelf Rubenstein and the Pope. Mikhail Gorbachev responded in agreement to Ronald Reagan's speech about the world coming together in the event of an extraterrestrial threat. So if you wonder why all major governments in the world are quiet about the UAP phenomenon, then this might make some sense. A large corporation with ties all over the world and unlimited source of money. From its founding in 1987, the Carlyle Group has pioneered investing in defense and national security markets, and through its takeover of companies with billions of dollars in defense contracts, became one of the US military top vendors, ranking among better known defense firms like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman and General Dynamics. But all these companies don't have the worldwide connections of the Carlyle's group. Rubenstein was also a chairman of the board of the Smithsonian Institution and has donated a lot of money to the institution. Smithsonian was also established in 1846 at the same time when the first obelisk monuments started raising in USA and strangely close to the purchase of Alaska. I think all of this is connected but that's for another video. David Rubenstein spent 10 millions out of his own pocket to restore the Washington Monument, the largest obelisk and structure in the world at the time when it was built. So this is just my opinion and current theory that I explore, but if you want to control the past or hide advanced civilization that survived a doomsday event, then controlling the Smithsonian Institution, the largest group of museums, education and research centers in the world might be the best way, but this is just my opinion. They also own AG&G, a crucial building and company featured in the Wilson Davis memo and directly connected to the UAP cover-up. Now let's look what John Podesta, who serves as chair of Hillary for America and is pro-disclosure, said in this interview. I'm with you, but I can't say so. But, right. but you were White House Chief of Staff. You had a very high security yeah. clearance, so Yo, recognize you us. can't tell us anything about classified information. Did what you see change your estimation of the probability? Has, ha, in the last 10 years, has your estimation of the probability that probability you've been visited what? by aliens changed at all? He means have you seen um, the book? I think nothing I saw in the government changed my estimation. At the end he says, I think nothing I saw in the government changed my estimation, implying that he saw something in the private sector. Now he and Hillary were associated with the Carlyle Group as we can see from these articles and also there is a correspondence between Podesta and representatives from the group as we can see in the leaked emails. Now this is just my opinion but let's see how they can in theory influence or stop disclosure if they want. Here's what Ronald Moultrie said in the last UAP hearings. 
you're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, if, who else is doing it? If something was officially brought to our attention, we would look at it. Uh, there are many things that are out there in the ether that aren't officially brought to our attention. So how would it have to be officially brought to your Excuse attention? I'm bringing it to your attention. Sure, so, <laughs> this is pretty official. Sure. So we'll go back and take a look at it, but generally there is some um, authoritative figure that says there is an incident that occurred. We'd like you to look at this. Uh, but in terms of just tracking what may be in the media that says that something occurred at this time, at this place, uh, there are probably a lot of leads that we would have to follow up on. I don't think we have resources to do that right now. In my opinion, he was completely denying the existence of exotic objects present in our atmosphere. And how is Ronald Moultrie connected to the Carlyle Group? Well, he was in the board of directors in the Better Angel Society, which received a generous funding from David Rubenstein. It's all in the annual report. Also, Ronald was a board member in iCapital Network from June 2020 till May 2021. The Carlyle Group invested in the company in 2018. It might be a coincidence or he might be returning some favors. Who knows, after all, they might have the best interest of the world in their mind. But here's what Lou Elizondo said about the first congressional hearings. Secondly, uh, this is coming from the same people who said that, uh, for the record, that we don't, we didn't look at at the Maelstrom uh, incident here in <laughs> in, uh, in uh, Montana because we don't we we don't look at information that's not sourced properly. First of all, you're the source, DoD. <laughs> I hate to break the news, but you're the ones who wrote the IIR in the first place, and then got FOIA, and you released to the public. Um, it is you know your your assessment that was done by the engineers. Um, how this was not even technically possible. It was your uh, commanders, Bob Salas and others, who came forward and actually talked about this and got debriefed. So, and here's what he said about the new leader of Aero, Sean Kirkpatrick, who, in my opinion, was chosen by the same group and Ronald Moultrie. They just now announced, I think, the director today. Uh, who, who did so, they announce, and who is he, and what do we know about him? Well, I I, I don't want to speak for the government. In my understanding, it's it's Sean Kirkpatrick. Okay. Uh, but, um, you know, I, that's not formal. That's not for me. That's not official. Let me just caveat that. And is, uh, is, is he a good hand? Is he a good hand, Lou? Boy, Ross, you'd have to ask me that, huh? We all remember this round table when only a few journalists were invited on a short notice, with Susan Gok, Ronald, and Sean, all of them don't agree with Lou Elizondo. And here's what Sean said on the last UAP hearing in April 2023. I should also state clearly for the record that in our research, Arrow has found no credible evidence thus far of extraterrestrial activity, off-world technology, or objects that defy the known laws of physics. In the end, there might be people pro and against disclosure within the government and the private sector, but it looks like those against are very powerful. For example, from this article, it's possible that even Senator Gillibrand received donations from the Carlyle's group. Marco Rubio was also connected to the group according to this article. And check out what he said in this interview. It looks like he mocks the ET hypothesis. They are actually not unprecedented. There have been hundreds and hundreds of reports almost identical to these over the last few years. Not about flying saucers, it's about small uh, vehicles operating in often restricted airspace. Avi Lop, who I thought was a disclosure advocate, recently changed gears and stated that UAPs should follow our rules of flight. He and Sean Kirkpatrick wrote, in my opinion, a Trojan horse study. And Harvard, where Avi Lop works, has received generous donation from David Rubenstein. There are rumors that the major forces in disclosure changed their minds somewhere around 2022 or tried to take control of the narrative. Jay Stratton, who is a pro-disclosure activist and a valuable insider, work at Mentec. The Carlyle Group bought Mentec in 2022, and it seems like Jay Stratton left and now he works in Radiance Technology. It's obvious that Jay Stratton and Luis Elizondo are pro-disclosure, but they are up against a powerful entity. But these are just my thoughts, and you need to take them with a bucket of salt. Of course, I don't accuse anyone of anything, I'm just thinking out loud. This is something to think about and explore. Anyway, this research and making videos takes time, so if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Like and share the video and subscribe to my channel with notifications on. Check out my community post as well, I might create a poll for you to vote on what my next video should be about. See you soon.